Once you're ready to create your first course, you can do so through the e-learning menu when you're signed in as an administrator. So I'm signed in now, and under e-learning, there's a section for courses. And if you expand that, you can either go to courses here or just click add new. So if I click add new now, it's going to take me to the course creation screen. And remember, this is creating the course post page. So what users would initially see when they go into this course. So the first thing you'll do is set a title for the course. So what you want to call this course. So I'm going to call this uh, course for screencast. And then within this page, you can use the default editor. You can switch to the Divi Builder. We would recommend that you stay with the WordPress editor, which is what I can see right now. That lets you use shortcodes really easily and not worry too much about the layout. So what we would generally do on a course page is set some context and really introduce users to what the course is about. Keep in mind too that out of the box and by default, course pages are accessible by anyone if they have the URL and they would also be indexed by search engines. So for that reason, generally we don't put a lot of training content on this page, but we do have a lot of introductory content. So generally that would mean setting expectations for the duration, talking about learning objectives, learning outcomes, who this is appropriate for, what you will learn as part of this course, um, what you should know going into this course, uh, what you can expect to achieve, uh, different elements like that. Maybe you want to talk a bit about uh, the course creator um, or any other elements that would set context here. So anything you want can really go in here. So you can add short codes, you can add text content, you know, you can use a lot of different styles. And I'm just going to expand the toolbar here now so that I've got additional controls so I can use the, the heading styles that are here. So in this one, maybe you just want to add some kind of welcome. So welcome to the course. Please choose a lesson below to begin. Now, this is just an example for the screencast. Usually you would want to go to a lot more detail. If, it, if this is someone's first course or their first time using a course on the site, you might want to talk a bit about um, how things would work. So it can be helpful too to have a course that's even an introduction to using courses on the site. So talking about using the Mark Complete button and how someone would navigate within the course. Um, you can start courses off that way, probably in its own lesson or else a distinct course. But just know that I'm talking about courses, that is something you might want to consider. So we can set um, basic content here um, that would go on this page. Another thing that you might want to consider, because this, this can be viewed by other people unless you protect it, um, you may want to think about what the experience is going to be like for people that aren't enrolled in the course. So in those situations, maybe you want to show someone who's anonymous or someone that's not uh, enrolled in the course but is signed in some kind of different content. So there are some shortcodes available for that. Examples with LearnDash would be um, student versus visitor shortcodes. So basically what I could do here is if the user is a student, then I can say student, put a shortcode there around that, and then close the shortcode here. So anyone that's a student would see that. Anyone that's not enrolled, I can show them different text. So I can say... Um, to access this course, you must be enrolled. And then I could even add a link to some kind of store page or enrollment page, something like that. And then let me just close that. And now people that are a student, so they are enrolled, would see this. And if they're not, they see that. So we'll start there. And then I'm just going to scroll down the page. And down here, you can see there's a course meta box here. So there's, there's lots of different values that can go in here that affect the settings for the course. And I want to talk about those briefly. So when the course timer is enabled, so that is set over in tools here under Uncanny Toolkit. So if you're using time tracking, then this allows you to override the default settings about how long 
someone can be idle on this page uh, before you know, they're prompted to indicate that they're still active. So generally speaking, we wouldn't have a value set for that. Um, it would just inherit the default. So course materials we generally don't use because you can include that text up here. Um, any kind of expectations you want to set. Course price type is really important, so I need to go through those in detail. So there are five options right here. Open means that anyone can access anything inside the course. So the lessons, the topics, the quizzes, anything inside the course without having to be signed in and without having to be enrolled. So if you want to make courses completely public, so search engines can see them, anyone can access them, make them open. Closed means that only users that are enrolled in the course can access the course materials and they cannot self-enroll. It can be through some other intervention like e-commerce, for example, or setting a tag if you're using uh, some of the marketing tools, but um, it has to be some kind of system or admin triggered enrollment. Users can't add themselves. Free is different than open in that users must self-enroll. So they can add themselves to the course, but it's not open to the public. So to access a free course, someone would need an account, they need to be signed into the site, and then they need to be able to self-enroll. So you can also add them to a course, they can still get in by e-commerce, but if they're able to, like if they have an account and they're able to get to the course page, then they would be able to self-enroll if it's free. So that's how it's different than open and closed. So the difference again between open is that um, free, it's restricted content, you have to be able to, like the learners have to enroll into it or be enrolled. It's different than closed in that with closed, users can enroll themselves, but in free, they can enroll themselves. And buy now and recurring are not generally used because we have uh, an e-commerce um, platform set up. But if you did choose to use that, it's just a simple way of quickly allowing users to purchase something. Same thing with recurring but uh, we don't generally use them on Uncanny LP sites. So those are the five different types that are available. This we don't recommend you change. So as users get enrolled, their user IDs will be populated here. We don't recommend you change that just because it's very easy to make a mistake and unenroll users. So sort lessons, um, generally we set this as menu order and it's a lot easier if you set it by menu order and then sort by ascending. That just means that everything is ordered by the value over here. So on lesson and topic pages, you'll see this order value and that lets you choose a number and it means that lower numbers will be at the top of the list and higher numbers will be at the bottom of the list. So what we generally do or recommend is that when you're ordering your lessons and topics, you go up in increments of 10. So the first lesson is 10, the second lesson is 20, then 30, then 40, etc. And the reason we suggest that is if you need to move anything around, so let's say that the lesson that's in the third position should be moved to the second position. So instead of having to renumber the one that's currently second and the one that's currently third, and so, so by default, if you'd set it up the way we recommend, then lesson one would be 10, lesson two would be 20. So lesson three, you could change from 30 to 15. And then it still allows a gap and you don't have to renumber everything else. So it's easier to move things around. And as long as you set it by menu order and ascending, then it would, uh, it would use the order that's here. Otherwise, it's going to look at date, which is very confusing and hard to manage. So course prerequisites, if there is a prerequisite, you can set it here. While you develop the courses, we definitely strongly recommend that you disable lesson progression. This means that um, you, you aren't forced to complete lessons and topics in order. So if this is unchecked, it means that someone has to go through all of the lessons in a course in order, um, in order to be able to complete the course. So they couldn't just jump to lesson number nine. They'd have to complete lessons one through eight to get to number nine. During development, if this is disabled, it just makes things a lot easier for reviews so that you can skip ahead, skip back, um, and see how things work. And then when you're ready to take it live, then you might want to uh, uncheck it. 
If you want to expire access, you can manage it this way. So there's a checkbox here, and then you can choose, you know, how many days after enrollment would someone uh, lose access to the course. And by default, if someone gets to the course page, they would see a list of lessons within the course. So even if they don't have access to the course, they can see the table that lists all of the lessons. If you don't want them to see that, then you can just click that. And then if you're setting up course certificates and you have certificates created, you can associate the certificates with a course here. So the certificates would be listed in the drop-down list. And this just means that if someone, if a learner triggers course completion, so they complete the course, then when they view the course page, they would see a link to retrieve their certificate. And it would only be assigned then when they complete everything within the course. So all lessons within the course are marked completed. So at this point, we've set up everything we need to, and I'm just going to publish this course. So I click on the Publish button, and it's going to add this course object now. You can see at this point there's still no associated content because I've just created the course. It has no lessons. It has no topics. So there's nothing to show here. And if I view this now, let me go ahead and open that by clicking the permalink. So I can view the course, and you can see is welcome to the course and please choose a lesson below to begin. So when I do that, I'm shown the text of someone that's enrolled. So this is a student. Now you can see when I view this, it is showing this text because I am, it is open. So I am enrolled as an admin user, which is why I see that text. So I see the student text. If I was signed in as, well, actually because it's open, everyone would see that text. So the, the student is not necessarily relevant in this case because it's open. Um, but if it was a closed course, I was enrolled, I would see that. And if, if another user was not enrolled, then they would see the visitor text. You can see over here on the right, because there are no lessons, course navigation is blank here. And course progress bar here has nothing in there because there are no lessons as well. Okay, one thing that you may not want on the courses is the ability to leave comments. Generally we don't, but it is left enabled for the blog if you're using a blog. So what you could do, you could go back and edit the page and uh, just turn comments off from the discussion settings. Otherwise, this is a basic course page. You can add the media to it that you need, but otherwise this would function as a course page and we'll see how it grows as we look through the instructions for adding the lessons and topics.